was a fatal shark attack at Port St. John's. It was a local lifeguard. He was swimming at backline, uh, body surfing, and unfortunately he just disappeared. All that they, they found was this, this fin, which washed up on the beach. And as you can see, they had clear lacerations. Then we had a second fatality at Port St. John's in March of 2009. This time it was a young surfer in the late afternoon. He seemed to be in the mid-break area and when he was on the board, shark attacked him and again, it, there were repeated bites. Well, we were about 16 guys out. Um, it was around about three o'clock. I paddled out. I went to across to the right hand side with the photographer. I walked back to go get my board and then I just heard one of the small guys shout shark, shark, shark. As I turned, I just thought it was just a normal shark, you know, let's get out of the water. And we had people screaming, shark, shark, shark. When we picked up our eye, we saw this one surfer riding a wave. And then the people started pointing at him. When he got in front of us, he dropped you know, off the surfboard. That's when he collapsed. And then we picked him up and we took him out of the water. We done the CPR and things, and we rushed him to hospital. As I turned and I ran around the bay, I just saw one blood pool, and then I knew, you know, it's, it is actually a shark attack. By the time the, the youngster had got to shore, he'd lost a huge amount of blood, and he unfortunately died soon thereafter. Unfortunately, in many cases, we're not ever able to explain exactly why that attack took place. Um, fortunately, attacks are very, very uncommon events, and often it's just unfortunate coincidence that a, either an aggressive or a hungry shark comes in contact with a human and we, and we have an attack. You know, there is stories going on about Sangomas having rituals in the evenings, cutting up goats and cows and throwing chung in the water. You know, that could be a factor. You know, if you go throw a lot of chung in the water, of course sharks are going to approach. The issue of sacrifices is one that seems to always stir a lot of controversy and to a large extent this is brought about by a lack of understanding of what is happening, a lack of understanding of the different cultures, the black people's culture the way in which they see and the way in which they perceive and which the way in which they carry out sacrifices of this nature. It's not just chickens and goats, but apparently cattle are slaughtered. And obviously when an animal is slaughtered there's a lot of blood and there's sufficient blood coming out of a, a dead cow to attract sharks from a considerable distance offshore. Various ceremonies would be conducted, but these would be ceremonies which are called Ufraela and they would involve the utilization of grains, spirits, chicken being shown to the ancestors in the water, clothing being shown, but sacrifices of animals, no, if there any sacrifice is to take place, these would normally be conducted back in the family area. Actually, every time the Sangomas, maybe the previous night, and people come and swim, we always get an attack. I have seen the Sangomas throwing blood in the ocean right where we surf. What we have at the moment is speculation, and we need to investigate all the possible reasons as to which could have triggered the spate of attacks that have been taking place near Fort St. John. I'm very scared of the water now. You know, I won't go in without a shark boat at the moment. It's just really, it's, it's really an extreme sport for us at the moment. Yeah. And I won't send anybody out there either. But I think what people have to realize is that the, the risk of shark attack is so incredibly low. We're looking in South Africa at about six attacks per annum, one of which is fatal. Um, so really, the chances of someone being attacked are incredibly rare.